move on. This will get interesting. Mm. And we are getting to August, friends and lovers. Um, feel free to recharge. I'm sure we're in the second half of the audio recording now. Yeah. This will be very interesting because we had a lot of layered conversation in regards to this film. And also, it's the first interview that we've done for the For Your Reference podcast. It is, isn't it? With Jordan Peele and Nope. So this particular um, episode that we're rating is a 1933 King Kong. <sighs> I gave this movie a three. Whoa. And I know people will be like, it's the sign of the times. Fuck the times, I'd say. Fuck the times. <laughs> I don't know how OT and I would have met, but fuck the times. Yeah. Um, I did not love the disrespect that they showed towards uh, black women. I did not like the disrespect they showed towards black people. Uh-huh. It was ridiculous. And people would say it's not even about that. They're trying to gloss over it. Then why um, have it in there? It was very clear to see. Yeah. And to me, I couldn't look past that. It was a painful watch. I think it's one of the most painful things I've watched this year. Yeah. Being like those things that I've watched so much of that are just given. Yeah. And I remember you mentioning that it shouldn't be. And I know it shouldn't be, but it's 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 the times. It's just, you know, it's the world we're living. Mm-hmm. And just watching this movie, I felt like it just sunk deeper than that. Yeah. Like, the, the portrayals are one thing. I think the words were just fucking hell, man. It got me. It got me. I couldn't give it anything higher. Uh, I didn't even try to give it anything higher. Um, the fact that, uh, this back then, that's all that I'm giving it, and that's a three. Okay. What about you? I feel like a wanker because I rated it much higher than that. All right. Um, however, I would preface and I will just continue off what OT is saying. A lot of us don't have the luxury of taking off our layers, nor should we be able to take off our layers of identity in order to enjoy a film. Some films aren't just films. A lot of the attitudes that were going around in the 1930s are the same attitudes that felt the need to be so superior and colonize the whole fucking world. Mm. So fuck that, fuck your queen, but also I gave it an eight. Wait, what? I gave the film an eight. Eight. It's a frontier in filmmaking. I'm never going to rate something like Avatar an eight, but I gave fuck it an eight. Fuck frontier. Jeez. All right. Um. Cool. I don't know what to say to that. I just, I just couldn't bring myself, man, to give this anything higher. That's fair enough. That's fair. That's absolutely fair. Um, unfucking fortunately, and we get real a lot on this podcast, but this is absolutely the way that we're seen by those that are in power. And whether I rate this a three or an eight, it's not going to change how a lot of people say fucking get over it. But they don't understand the generational trauma that comes from shit like this. So that's the lesson of today. Um, take it or leave it, I guess. I think OT is going to leave my rating. We're going into Nope. Nope. We have another patron rating, OT. All right. This is from our O from South Africa. Nice. Um, shout out to your brethren, Trevor Noah, for finishing the Daily Show. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Rob. As close to perfection as you can get in this gender-bending flick from JP, it's more than meets the eye in the best way possible. It's spectacle, it's political in its commentary, and beautiful in its imagery. The movie shines on a technical and thematical level, and it's up there as one of the best this year. Mm, I'd agree with that. Um, Did he give it a nine? He gave it a nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll one-up you, Rob. Um, I'll give it a ten. I gave it a 10 as well. Cheers, OT. It's one of those things that you watch and think that um, I needed a second to just comprehend everything I'd watched after immediately watching it the first time. And thinking of how he laid out everything. Yeah. You know, even after we interviewed him and what he said, what we tried to depict, I've never been so happy walking out of a cinema. Um. 
And I think one of the, that's one of the things that I'll carry with me for a long time. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't give this anything less than a 10. I gave it a 10 as well. Nice. There's something that's been um, sitting with me since we released Nope and since seeing a lot of the dismal sort of feedback in regards to Nope. And I want to ask you, OT, in this Christmas ratings and um, for our friends and lovers that are still here thus far, do you think that audiences, not just white audiences, but do you think that audiences are used to being delivered a certain type of story when it comes to black filmmaking? Yeah, I think they expect something quite, um, I'm not sure obvious is the word. You know, when you look at Get Out and the reception it got, but then when it starts getting a bit um, psychological or anything like that with us or Nope, then it's like, huh? Yeah. This isn't good. Um, what are the layers? Why are we getting a sort of base level enthrallment that we got with Get Out? Yeah. Um, and I understand that Get Out was good in as much as it was good. You know, it's still one of my one of my favorites. But I think what Nope did here is underlay the the messaging. You know, and I think showing uh, black joy, I think, has been the theme this year. Yeah. Um, we did an interview with Black uh, with Jemison for Black Snow, which will be coming out. Mm-hmm. I think that came out as well. It's it's something that we need to see more of. Yeah. And I didn't know I needed it until I saw it. Yeah. And what Jordan Peele laid out here and still telling a message yeah. was phenomenal, you know. Um, the spectacle, we all live in it, we all see it, we you know, you you might know what you you might not know what to call it. You know, you might not have the word for it, but you, you might even it. be the spectacle. You might knowing. be the one, you know. Yeah. So it, it, it's so it cuts through so many layers. Yeah. That I'm like, bro, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Like, I don't understand why there's this dissonance between um, people who don't want to see it, or they're just looking at it from a face value perspective. Or it's not a black person trying to run run away from white people. You know, it, yeah. it's it's something different. You know? But you know why. Yeah, I know. It's a comfortability. I, I, I understand that. But you know why. I, I felt that we'd gotten somewhere with Jordan Peele where people would be like, oh, he, he's taking us on a journey and we just need to be on board and, and to enjoy his brilliantness. But I guess it'll take some time, man. I think part of it is like Get Out is a great film, but people always see it as a black film. And whenever people say it's a black film, as much as I always love to say it, you also point out that there's like a cap, there's a ceiling. Yeah. Like whatever a black film is, it's never going to be as great as like a normal white film. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that's part of why I said when we did the review that Nope is my favorite over Get Out simply in the pure fact that it's not just a black film, it's a human woven into black themes of a film. Because I think a lot of people are like, I don't understand this. This is Steven Spielberg. This is, you know, it's trying to be this, it's trying to that. Where do I identify the black themes? But they were all there throughout the film. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of people are, and I think, you know, as much as we joke and as much as I say with OT, like you're not allowed to have an opinion, I think a lot of people are used to being funneled the same sort of narrative. It's the same reason why you see all of the slave films um, get a lot of awards, right? Fuck Emancipation. If it gets nominated, I'm coming for you. Yeah, fuck you and the fake Haitian clique you claim. Like, who? what for? Yeah. Come on, Fuqua. I felt like, you know what, this is going to be a tangent a bit. If you've... Like, I watched Emancipation. I knew that I didn't want to watch it, but I watched it because I need to support black directors, black cast, and all that. But it comes a point where you're like, what is this for? And I remember, I think I read an interview that Will Smith said, and it was like, oh, why are you doing another slave movie? And then he was like, oh, it's not a slave movie, it's a freedom movie. No, when you watch that movie, it's a fucking slave movie. And I'm just up to here with that fucking shit. We need to just, I don't know, man, like, just no. No, man, come on. Come on now. The world is fucking hard enough as it is. We have 
like you could you could overlay this movie with ten others within the past decade alone. I think a lot of people want to be able to be the experts, especially when it comes to film. But sometimes perhaps Black Joy can be packaged to you in a way you don't fucking understand. Yeah. And And that doesn't make it a terrible film. It doesn't make it less than Get Out. It's just that you might not understand it because you're used to seeing the fucking trauma bonds of black filmmaking. It's the fucking expectation, isn't it? Yeah. And when you're talking about, when you're talking to to John and Peel and he's saying that it was important for him to depict black joy because a lot of the time we see emancipation and shit. And still, to this day, that's the standard of what they expect from a black movie. Yeah. Let's show the struggle. Let's show the whipping. Let's Keep show- him on the thumb. And I understand the picture played such a pivotal role and it, it, it was defining. I understand that it's not being told maybe or whatever, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just up to here, man. Like I'm, I watched it. I knew I'd regret it. I hoped for better. I expected more from Fuqua, to be honest. And yeah, anyway, yeah, that was just a, my little rant tangent. But we can continue. That's okay. Eventually, friends and lovers, we are going to cover Till. And I think that is a great example of telling a necessary story in black history, which is American history, that a lot of people don't want to talk about and they don't want to face, especially in instances where they're trying to, like, coddle those that don't want to face American or even Western sort of history in regards to the treatment of black people. Um and as long as we have our voice, we will continue to speak out against it. Yep. But I love you, my love. Thank you for giving space and grace because I think at the end of the day, friends and lovers, what we cover isn't just a film. It isn't just a TV show. There is humanity behind the characters, even if the narrative doesn't allow for that. Mm. Um, and it absolutely takes its fucking toll. Yeah. Like, fuck all your narratives that pandered to white people. <laughs> fuck that shit. And he'll probably get nominated. He'll probably fucking win something or the director will win something. And uh, I just want us to be better and bigger than this. But to each their own, I guess. Do you want to get into something that it's, it's a bit more happy and it's still to do with black joy, I guess, or black excellence? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about our power, August, OT. Woo! <laughs> Do you want to rate um, Power and Ghost uh, separately? I'll rate them as one because what Courtney A. Camp has done uh-huh. cannot just be slid under the table and hidden. This Power universe is magnificent. The storytelling is great. The acting is superb. Uh, just the storytelling alone, man. I gave this a 10, both of them. Power wow. and Ghost, 10. I, I don't think, from an entertainment point of view, mm-hmm. what are you looking for as an audience? That power or ghost does not deliver. Mm-hmm. I was skeptical with Ghost. I didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't know that they could do that with Tariq. But the ingenuity of just, just lifting that character to a different level. Yeah. Oh, 10, 10, 10. Okay. Ertz is back in the building. And, bro, it's not a black show or whatever you want to call it. You know, people, apparently people don't even, outside certain circles don't even watch it. It yeah. doesn't get recognized. The cast doesn't even get invited to fucking SNL for promos. Fuck that shit. Fuck that noise. There's people have created something brilliant, something magnificent, something that is, is enjoyable through and through. Mm. And it's one of the best shows on currently that you, you're not even going to get anything closer to that shit. So, you know, fuck that noise, man. Power and Ghost 10. I think I need to rate before you. I gave it a nine. All right. I you gave it a nine. just need to get out. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> So if no one gets to the second half, they just think I'm the one telling you to get out. Mm-hmm. Okay, nice. Um, I gave it a nine because, uh, you know, there are, there are some things on balance that 
weren't there, but it doesn't take away again from the pioneering sort of building of a universe that it has. And we dedicated a whole fucking month. We were, we were a bit busy, so we needed to condense it, but it was power August motherfuckers. Power August. I am going to say it now. The next one is my favorite in the universe. I know. I know. It's I raising Canaan. It's raising Canaan. I give this a 10 as well. I give it a 10 too. Hey. Very nice. Why did you give it a 10, my love? <laughs> like, you know, the same way that I thought that this would just be a wash or some some random story that we don't really need to see. Like we're just waiting for the next like ghost yeah. season, yeah. But wow, wow, wow! Did I was I wrong? Mm-hmm. Jesus, the characters, the storytelling again is so good. The aesthetic, the aesthetic, the fashion, mm. the music. Wow, wow. Um, Patina Miller, motherfuckers. I think that's all I need to say, Patina Miller. Yeah, she is. <laughs> wow, bloody hell. Yeah. I think for some of you who might not know Patina Miller, she's in Madam Secretary. Yeah. Um, but her acting chops are just next level. Yeah. It's wild. Wow. What a woman. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Well, no disagreements here. And let's go into force. Oh. Oh man. Is this because we have a white lead? Not even. <laughs> Tommy's a brother, man. Um, I give this an eight. I give it an eight too. I expected more from Tommy. I expected. I I, I knew after after Ghost ended. Uh huh. It was Tommy that I wanted to see next. Yeah. And they delayed that and they gave us Ghost, which was something that I was like, that's a miscalculation. That's a misstep. Yeah. We didn't even get a Tate season either. Yeah, but. Getting to see Tommy and his world, uh, hopefully it gets stronger and stronger as they build the world. Uh-huh. Um, but it still has a lot of room to grow, which is good because they have the best sort of lead they can get mm-hmm. with this. Uh, Sakura is amazing, amazing, amazing. Fucking hell, man. Absolutely. He is different level. Yep. Um, but I'm expecting more story-wise. I think there's there's things that needs to be done to just... Bring it home, man. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you can see it's literally just at the at the, at the periphery. Like yeah. just hold it. Just hold it by the balls and just bring it back, man. Uh-huh. I agree. Yeah. I absolutely agree. And I'm pretty sure the next season is coming out soon as well. Yeah. Hopefully it, it just goes strength to strength because I know this eight is only temporary uh-huh. and I can't wait to shot a ten next year. Okay, well, I don't know if it's strength to strength, but we're going into... It's not the first Idris Elba, but it might be the first Idris Elba-led film or TV show that we're covering. All right. Even though we do we do love Luther. Mm. We're talking about Beast. Come on, Mr. Champion of all black shit. I'll give it a seven. I gave it a seven too. <laughs> like, bro... <laughs> Uh, the expectations with this were low for me going in yeah. after watching the trailer. Because I was like, oh, fucking hell, they're just going to do some generic African shit. Yeah. And when I went there, they just did some generic African uh-huh. shit. So I got what I expected. The storyline was, eh, wasn't that strong. Yeah. I think there was a lot of gaps and holes in this. Uh I just couldn't see myself giving it any other seven, you know, like yeah. it probably even would have been a six just because they filmed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the lions. But I think in this day and age, we need to hold ourselves in with, with so much, you know, higher uh, regard and esteem, especially when it comes to quality and what we're delivering and the storytelling. And I think those work to be done in the background for this. Do you think a part of it, you giving it a seven was, we do love Shalto Copley, but was there a bit of it because it was a, even though he was South African, but there was a white man that knew more about the motherland than Idris Elba? No, not even that. I think Idris as a character was just too flawed, just too flawed to the point where 
any sort of character development didn't even meet the bare minimum standard of what a a lead character should be. Mm -hmm. There were so many holes with his character that I felt that A, as a black person and a black man who is, I think he was American, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just expected more from him. I think there was just too many hurdles for him to go through that I felt by the end of it, Regardless of the teeny minute development that was there, there was just a whole gap wanting. Yeah. And that was my only qualm with this, especially when it came to how I rated it. Um, Shadow Cop play is fucking amazing, man. Um, if you know if you know me, District Nine is my favorite sort of movie ever. So yeah, man, like I expected more. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, we're going to talk about Orphan. I didn't put the other Orphan. I just talked about Orphan First Kill. That's I get- not fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. You can rate both if you want. Orphan is my OG, man. Orphan, Orphan was one of the movies that I, one of the first horror movies that I rewatched multiple times just because of the shock factor. I could not see that shit coming and I don't know why back then that I rewatched the shit out of that. But often fast kill. No, no. rate the first often. Oh, first often was a nine. Yeah, same. Second often, I give it a six. I gave it a five. Oh, like I love Julia Stiles next uh, as much as the next man, you know. Um, but wow, Jesus, I I really try to love this, but it was just too many, too many. <laughs> This, it was so weak. The storyline was so weak that I thought that maybe Julia Styles was just carried through. Mm-hmm. But even then, she just had too much of a surmountable task for that. That she I, couldn't carry the whole film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, a, a six was for me. Man. Okay, well, let's move on to greener pastures in the waterfront. If you're nasty, we're talking about Pea Valley, the Pussy Valley. Season two, we have another patron rating OT. Tell me it's Ben. It's absolutely oh, Ben. Oh, God, man. Ah, so he's watched season two? No, but I will allow it in the For Your Reference household. All right, all right. I'm Come a generous. On, Come on, Ben. I'm a generous, nasty judge. Are you ready? Mm. I haven't even listened to the episode, but I know it was muy caliente. And God damn it, I can't wait to watch season two. Thank you for turning a little running joke into one of the most surprising shows I've seen in a long time. Oh, football Ben. Football Ben breaking the mold because I don't know if I will allow it in any other instance, but because it's Ben and because it's Pussy Valley, I'm going to allow it. What do you think Ben rated season two? I think he gave it a nine. He gave it a 10, you motherfucker. Oh, come on. Ooh. Now I'm getting hot and bothered, bro. <laughs> At Ben's Pussy Valley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why not? <laughs> uh, wow. I think season two went to greater strength than I thought it would. Oh, absolutely. I did not expect it from Pussy Valley. Yeah. You know, with this, you know, especially like with a show like Succession, uh, you know, as much as I love season one, I was like, oh, Season two, they probably have some room because there's so many characters and so many things they can go through. Mm-hmm. With Pussy Valley, I was really hesitant and I was scared. Yeah. I was nervous. I was like, oh, I don't want it to fall into the season two trap of where it's like, oh, not good. And then we won't be able to cover it. <laughs> but I was so glad to be wrong. Yeah. Season two was the, oh, the bit. Mississippi. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you feeling your crooked letter? I'm feeling my crooked letter right now. It's a 10. <laughs> it's a 10, 10, 10. It's a 10 for me too, you motherfucker. They went to depth Cheers. not known to man. This show showed so much quality, so yes. much gravitas. Woo. The writing, the directing, mm. the cinematography, yeah. the dancing, the music. The sc- oh, what can I say? This show delivered in all f- sort of fronts. Like... <sighs> I think this is, in my lifetime, mm. this is, I think, the third time that I've went out of my way to look for a soundtrack album of a show. Uh-huh. I have never done that before. 
yeah. other than two specific times. I think the first one was like Save the Last Dance. Of course. But Jesus bloody, it was, you know, even thinking about it right now. Yeah. I, I was, those Sundays, because it, it, come, it comes out on a Sunday here in Australia and it was mm-hmm. like th- watching the episode, they were focusing on Kishon. I had a lot of qualms of Kishon back back in season one, and because yeah. I, it was just my lack of understanding and knowledge. Mm-hmm. And what season two did, it, it it broke me, my guy. It just broke me. Yeah, it was it was raw, it was unfiltered, it was heartfelt. And at the end of it, both of us needed a break. Yeah, we were like, okay, let's just fucking recalibrate what the fuck we've just watched. And they did that three more times. Yeah. It wasn't. It, it was wasn't an easy wild. watch. No, yeah. it was wild. I I was, you know, like, and if there's any one person I need to meet, is fucking Katori Hall. Yes, please. Like, what the hell was this? Yeah. Where did she pull this from? Yeah. Anyone of our patrons or regular viewers who's not watched Pussy Valley. It only gets stronger. Yeah. And season two is one of the things that you, it's a must, must watch. In any sort of, if, if, if you cover movies, if you watch movies, if you watch TV shows or whatever the fuck. You're my, not worth your grain of salt if you don't watch fucking Pussy Valley. What's the point? Yeah. What's the point of watching any other show if you're not watching Pussy Valley? Absolutely. Don't let the name dis- distract you or thinking that it's some sort of show that it's just going to be about fucking pussy. It's not going to be about pussy. Well, it can oh. be. Smell it. Ooh. <laughs> That's some sweet juices. <laughs> but it's going to elevate. It's going to elevate everything you've thought that TV should be. Yeah. And everything that this show does, man, Katori Hall, this is a drink, man. Cheers. Like, what the fuck? I was, th- this is a... I'm even surprised. And I loved, I gave season one a 10. Me too. <laughs> season two is something else. It's a different beast. It is. Absolutely. Cheers. Mm-mm-mm. We need to be more supportive of media and TV shows that we love. And Pussy Valley is absolutely at the epicenter of that. If you love it, support it, to recommend it, get it everyone to watch it because we live in a world that is so consumable, that is so digitized, that is so followable, that is so quotable, that is so fucking TikTokable. But we also live in a world that continues to push a narrative that the struggle isn't real. And those that continue to fight against the struggle are those that are trying to push a narrative somewhere else. And P Valley, Pussy Valley is absolutely where we need to be. It talks about hard to talk about issues that specifically talk about black people in the South, in the US, and we need to be unflinching and we need to be relentless in the fight for equality. Mm. Huh. Are you Daryl at the car wash? I sure am, man. Is I'm, it more I'm, than just the car wash fluids? I need to clean our road cast after this. <laughs> <laughs> We might get sponsored after that, OT. Oh, for sure, man. For (laughs) sure. Again, we have really interesting sort of tonal changes. We're moving into the adapted series from Neil Gaiman, but the Netflix-specific series of The Sandman. We have another patron rating, OT. Oh, Julio? Of course it's Julio. Nice. You really know our patrons, (laughs) don't you? Gotta celebrate that we're assured another season of Emo Morpheus. Emorpheus? Emorpheus. And it's going to get better. But also, unlike Katie, I totally get how terrible it would be if the dream world fell into chaos with a devil emoji. (laughs) (laughs) What do you think Coolio rated it? I think he gave it a 9.5. A 10. Nice. Do you I, not know how much of a fanboy? I was trying to pull myself back thinking that he had rated anything less. Julio is the amorphous fanboy. Okay. He gave it a 10. What did you rate it? Let's bring the average down, OT. Let's let, let's bring it down. We'll bring it down because I gave it a 10. What? Oh. Boo! Uh, I was... <laughs> I didn't know what Sandman was. I've not read the comics. I didn't know anything about it. But we did buy it. We do have the books. We have like fucking, I think they're here somewhere. 
We've got. Oh, Jesus. Ah! Hi, patrons. We've got books galore. I'm going to start reading them uh, during my holiday break. And it's going to be bloody amazing uh, for the patrons. They're going to get the indigenous version soon. Uh huh. Not a but, Sandman. But wow. I did not expect a lot from this because mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about it. Yep. But the world building alone took me. You know, I love, I love world building, man. How about Morpheus turning up as a black man to a black woman? Still a 10? It doesn't matter if a lot of people out there want to wish to see people as white people. <laughs> it's only reflective of the world we live in. So I'm not going to judge that. You have a marvelous ability. I don't think I've ever seen anyone be able to turn that in your favor. Wow. I'm not going to judge that. But wow. I think, you know what? I love I love world building, man. I love the slow grind of giving me the details. You really gave it a 10? I did. Because I loved it. I loved it. And I can't wait to delve into the world of what Sandman is. Because wow. what else... I'm just eager now to just explore because I feel like there's so much, there's so much things to go through and they can go anywhere with this show. Can I give you my rating or are you done or not? I'm done splooshing. Give me yours. I gave Sandman a seven. Oh my word. (laughs) So I don't know if that means you and Julio have your own podcast. I think it does at this point. (laughs) I gave it a seven. And I, anyway, we don't need to hash it out. We've already covered it in the episode. But like OT pointed out, we do have the books. So, um, you know, eventually I will get around to reading the books. Even though Julio said that the show makes him more likable. So the books won't (laughs) add to any, it would probably take away from the experience. And the next episode we have, Seduce and Scheme, put his face in your crack like a fiend. Uh-huh. Wow. Like, rap shit? Wow, this is like foreplay. Just get to it, OT. Ten! Hey, ten. What else? Yeah. What else? Ten. What else? Me, you've got the best characters in there. And Shauna, not Cliff. You've got the best and the most hittable characters in there. <laughs> yeah, Cliff is a different level. Like, fuck him, man. Fuck him. People are messy. Yeah, man. to the point I don't even want to... The main character, but... Uh, uh. For someone that roots for every black character, that's saying something. Yeah, Cliff is a problem. <laughs> but rap shit is one of those surprises of the year. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things, like, it, it'd definitely be one of my, like... Reverse Prima Noctis or some shit. Like, oh, are you I predicting could, the splooshes or what? I could go back, my guy. Yeah. Ooh, rap shit is where it's at. I'm glad it's been renewed for season two. Hopefully yeah. HBO Max doesn't get shitty. <laughs> Either way, this is going to be fine. This, we going to be all right. We going to be all right. Because rap shit ain't going nowhere. No, There was a space not. and they fucking fill that shit up. And yeah. I'm glad. We'll use our handful of listenership to make sure rap shit doesn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. For sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's move on to something that we really, really enjoyed. And I'm talking about friends and lovers. Hold on to your hats because there were a lot of people, including our patrons, that didn't necessarily care for this film, even though we had a right and good time. I'm talking about Bullet Train. Oh, I give Bullet Train a nine. I gave it an 8.5. Okay, I enjoyed it. But this is where, like, I I don't mean to be like Donder Academy, but like this is where numbers don't fucking matter because I had one of the best experiences watching this film. (laughs) But again, it is still an 8.5. But I really, really, really enjoyed watching this film. Me too. It it was fun. It didn't take itself too seriously. Mm. Uh, Brian Terry Henry, man. Fuck you. And um, I'm not going to say fuck you, but I do love you, Paul. He said that he didn't like his British accent at all. Really? Yeah. Hey, Paul, do you only like my accent? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think I'm doing it properly? Why, you, Paul? <laughs> no, nah, bro. So good. So, so good. So good. I think 
you know, I can speak of the controversy of them thinking that, hey, you know, because I've raised those points before. So if, if, if Asian people feel like they should have done it with more predominantly Asian cast, I can't speak to that. But in the moment... Because we didn't know that watching the film. We just had a good time yeah, and then we read that In the year. moment of me watching it, I just had a good time. It was fun. It was lighthearted. And it's one of my regrets not watching it in the cinema because yeah. a lot of the times when we've gone to watch shit in the cinema, it's been so bad. You know, like... Oh, okay. We didn't even need to be there. But this is one of those times where I was like, oh, maybe we should have actually gone to this. Yeah. But wow, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, man. Okay. Interesting. Speaking of stuff that we enjoy and things that make our hearts sing and our souls cry, we're talking about reservation dogs, OT. Oh. And we have another patron rating. Oh, bloody hell. I can't think of anyone who that would be. Sam T. All right, Sam. Yes. I gave this rating because Reservation Dogs is one of my favorite shows that I discovered this year. Nice. Mainly because of the FYR team. Mm-hmm. It's kind of fucking wild that people actually listen and find stuff through us. But anyway, we love you, Sam. Let me continue. I heard nothing but good things about the show. So when I heard KT and OT were doing a segment, I decided to give it a watch. I love the discussions of indigenous cultures, colonization, and the struggles of identity. Thank you for a great episode. Thank you, Sam, so much. I'm getting, we're we're like almost two hours deep, so I'm getting very emotional. But we fucking love you, Sam. Thank you so much. (sighs) What do you think Sam rated it? Did he give it a 10? He gave it a 9. Okay. Okay. I won't disappoint you in that department because I give it a 10. Hey, I give it a 10 too. You know, it's, it's wild when they're talking about the first indigenous show that's, you know, run uh, in the U S in the U S about that. I was like, wait, what? How the fuck? How in this day and age of 2022 is this the fast? Because you could even argue that America is decades ahead of other countries in regards to cinema, in regards to television programming. Why did it take the 2020s in order to get this? And why did it take Tiger YTT to fucking do it? We know why. We need to be better. It's the same reason why you get black British actors. We know why. We need to be better as people, man. Yeah. Like, we're devoiding, like, just watching Reserv reservation dogs yeah i got so emotional oh me too the characters the storytelling again in this wow um bear in as much as i had qualms with him yeah he grew man he was a kid yeah he, he grew was a up. kid they're all fucking kids yeah and they're faced with fucking tough decisions to make unimaginable shit that a lot of other kids wouldn't even have to think about yeah, yeah. and i I'm glad I got to see this. Mm-hmm. I got to watch it and enjoy it because it's it's definitely the standards of 2022. Absolutely. If if you've not watched this, just take it's a really like 30 minute show or whatever, man. You could finish this in a weekend. Binge it. It's definitely worth it. It's organic. It's organic. <laughs> and you laugh, you'll cry, and you'll enjoy seeing something uniquely different yeah and something you know i i love i love watching things differently like i love watching different people on screens man um growing up in africa i used to you know i used to take shit for granted i'd watch uh, kenyan shows yeah you know and i'd think oh other countries probably have this shit too yeah you know um i'd watch home and away as well back in the day and think australia is all made up of fucking white people Hello. And then only to come here and see a plethora of different people. I'm like, hey, what? None. <laughs> uh, but wow, wow, wow. It, it, representation does a lot, especially, you know, I, I seek it out. I would go out of my way to look for that. And what Reservation Dogs does. Yeah. I hold my hands up. It, it's definitely one of the better shows this year, hands down. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There are some hard to talk about topics that can only ever be talked about by the community. 
So shout out to Sterling Harjo's, shout out to everyone that's involved with Reservation Dogs because, you know, even though the first season was hard to get through and we had to wait till season two to finish off season one to get to season two, there are some, you know, there there, there are obviously a lot of themes that are very specific to Native Americans and even very specifically in Oklahoma. Um but there are a lot of universal themes that even I as an Australian born Tongan and you as a Kenyan Kenyan mm-hmm. um can relate to. And we absolutely love everything about that show. So mwah. man. Cheers to that, man. Cheers to that, my love. The next film that we're going to get into is Muru. And we also had an interview as well. Oh, Muru. I love this. Mm-hmm. I love this. It was is is you know I I was learning a lot as well you know yep. there's a lot of shit that I don't know about the histories especially of things happening in New Zealand mm-hmm. and an eight nice you uh, I gave it a nine point five oh sweet yeah sweet as <laughs> I think again it comes to sort of the red for now territory where I had issues of the community sort of portrayal. But it's important to talk about the divide. It's, it's important to talk about the divide, but you also have to fucking address it because then it feels like you're just pointing out oh, that's the norm and that's how it's going to be. Or is it just because you're seeing people that aren't that community or don't understand it and they're just going to think about like all of these people are shit and they don't know how to handle their affairs? Is that what you're worried about? No. I want solutions to be presented to the challenges that they raise because you didn't even like the harder they fall either like i want like it's one thing pointing out how within our community we can have some issues Uh uh-huh but then i want to start the conversation afterwards Mm -hmm. of how does that look how does it look different yeah how do we build on that how do we make people more you know i just when you leave it like that, like the community portrayal, and then you're like, that's it. It hurts me because I want us to figure out a solution. To but is it the onus is. of the film to address that? It's it's the onus of the film to raise something and to try and sort of start a talking point rather than just showing us. I think we've already been shown of how it is multiple times. It's not something new. It's something. But specifically in Aotearoa, that's probably new for you. Yes, but it's not new within all the different sort of ethnic communities that we've seen. And it's okay. something that I see all the time and something that I've grown up seeing all the time. And there's never a solution presented. And maybe that's a difficult onus putting on a director. And I understand that that's on my baggage. And that's why I was like, you know what? My ratings would have baggage as well. So... I think everyone does. It's just whether they want to admit it or not. Yeah, and, and that's why I just couldn't give it anything higher. But it, it was definitely a really good movie to watch. It was good to see the the struggle that went through and the and the fight that they put. How about into Manu this. Bennett? Yeah, His and character, seeing Kimi Manu Oda. Bennett as well. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it's been a minute. I think he was in Arrow, which I stopped watching ages ago. But he's just disappeared from screens. He's so talented. Oh, he's so he's charismatic. Amazing. He's... I'm like, why did you have to be on that side? <laughs> yeah, like, come on, man. Why couldn't you fight come with on. us? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he, he's definitely one of those guys you always want him to be on your side. He, he's he's that just really, really good. Yeah, through through. absolutely. Um, well, I guess if we wanted to get a little bit of light shit into here, let's talk about Halloween ends. Friends and lovers, if you're not aware, Halloween of 2021, we did cover the Halloween franchise. And we also tried watching a Rob Zombie film um, out of context. Uh, oh. We've watched half of it. We need <laughs> to get to the other half, so I guess we'll see. But go and check out our Halloween franchise that we did in 2021, Friends and Lovers. To wrap up the trilogy, the recent trilogy, we covered Halloween Ends. We have another patron rating, OT. Ben? Brent. Oh, okay. I think Ben knew there was no winning in this, <laughs> <laughs> in this rating. <laughs> I had to give this a slight bit of love because it was horrible but funny as hell. Way better than one that came before it. I remember just being bored with that one. 
From the moment the little shit kid got thrown off the balcony, it had my attention <laughs> locked. <laughs> bit of a spoiler, but it was funny. Um, I like that they tried something a bit different, but then they just pulled the rug out and went back to the same old shit and killed some of the fun for me. Watching Laurie's daughter just break the shit out of Mike's arm was hype though, but only because it was so dumb. That's my final review. So dumb that it's fun. I think you give it an eight. A seven. Okay. I'll give it an eight. Um, you gave it an eight? Yeah. It's my favorite Halloween movie to date. Wait, even the H2O, LL Cool J with his voluptuous breast erotica? <laughs> That's your thing. Are you saying it's your favorite, <laughs> favorite Halloween film? Yeah. Fuck off. Because we get to see Laurie Strode fucking fully, you know, at the end. Nah, bro. If you're not rooting for Laurie, who, who, what are you doing here? I'm rooting for myself to go home and let the movie finish. No, I love this, man. Uh, I think that it was it was much needed. I think this is the perfect way to end. It was the only way this story could be told. Other than fucking jumping the shark. This was the only way. Okay. And I loved it. And an eight for me it, it rescued the halloween franchise for me you know how skeptical i was of the all other halloweens which would even get near eight but this it's the savior man so you all for beating up high school kids as a whole adult yes are we gonna see are we gonna see a spin-off of mark or pa with you as the lead yep <laughs> <laughs> all right um Speaking of ridiculous female and protagonists, we have Woman King. We have another patron rating, OT. Well, you didn't give us your Halloween rating. Six. <laughs> of course. I was hoping you wouldn't notice. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back. We have another patron rating for Woman King. Mm -hmm. Do you want to guess who rated it? It's someone that hasn't come up yet. Oh, who's not come up? Really? Yeah. Paul? Has Paul come up? Yes. Who then? Colby. Hey! Don't say A yet. You don't know what his rating is. All right. Tell me. I would be interested to know what you rated it, given how much tax and I guess the flavor of your ratings uh, this year. I would be interested. But let's go into Colby's. The Woman King is a roaring triumph on every level. It's a pride-filled directorial achievement of Gina Price Bythewood, who boldly celebrates our beauty and our grit. She leads the charge, anchored to an ensemble that doesn't miss, action that doesn't let up, to be crowned. <laughs> crowned is a very choice of the word with snot bubbling Viola Davis, but anyway. <laughs> 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 as one of the best action war dramas of our generation. And we know hey. we, we know Colby is very much about platitudes. But Come on, Colby. Let me repeat that. To be crowned as one of the best action war dramas of our generation. <laughs> do you want to comment on that or do you want to just guess his no, rating? I'm just, just going to guess his rating. Um, I think he gave it a 10. He gave it a 9. Okay. I haven't, there's, there's hope for you still, Colby. I haven't asked it for any of the patron ratings, but what do you think on his comment? I, I love the love for um, Gina. Yeah. Uh, you know, love on basketball. Whoop, whoop. And all that. But wow. I think from if, if I was to look at it from an action genre sort of point of view only without yeah. the, all the other baggage that he has going on i would probably just give it a nine okay because i felt it was really good we got viola davis who, she was incredible in this oh man. yeah she was really, like she her really muscles was. were justified not like kamal najiani in eternals yeah come on if, if, if you're gonna be in a movie <laughs> and you're not wearing bloody overalls <laughs> and you can't tell what you Nah, that was ridiculous. Eternals was just something just, ugh, put in the bin. For people that don't cover it, we keep talking about it but keep going. Would anyone even care? No. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my rating for Woman King was an eight. Oh, that was much higher than I thought. Mm. Do you listen to the episodes that you record? I listen to the episodes. <laughs> I do. Because the OT in the Christmas is not the OT when we're recording. 
I had to take a few steps back, mm-hmm. you know, and I get that it's been directed by, it's been directed and written by these white women who probably didn't understand what the, uh, they did to, you know, the participation in the slave trade or they knew or wrote around it. Uh-huh. Whatever the hell that was, I'm not going to bring that shit to this to affect the rating of what I watched because as a movie, it was quite enjoyable. It was entertaining. I think watching Viola just do her stuff was good, even though I don't like her fucking snot bubbling over the queen. <laughs> Thank you. I just couldn't give it anything lower because it will be disrespectful of the work that Viola put in. Because Can I be disrespectful? Deserved. Be disrespectful all you want, man. I gave it a five. Yes. All right. Now put some respect on that. (laughs) No. Disrespectfully, we're in the 2020s. You get two white women writers and you're complicit to the slave trade in regards to the Dahomey warriors. You're conscious of the fact that you're complicit to the slave trade. So at least there's a concedence in the film. However, there are all these platitudes that sound really great. And as much as I love John Boyega, like it wasn't enough. Like for those that are casual sort of moviegoers or exactly like you said, if you don't think about all of that like sort of political, emotional baggage, then it's a nine. But that's what this film fucking is. Why dabble in something as hard and as as labored, if you'll pardon the pun, as slavery, and then try and pussyfoot around that shit? Fuck off. <laughs> right, right from Stacey Dash's point of view and clueless, if that's the fucking point. Wow. No, like if you want to talk about light, like light stories or black characters, then do that. Why fucking talk about the slave trade, which again is a very new, like this specific sort of story is very new, right? To the tapestry of cinema on a like global sort of scale. Why fucking do it? Who asks for it? And if we didn't ask for it, why are you half cocking this shit? Fuck off. I don't care for it. Okay. Because what does that mean? Are we just dumb babies and you give us like beautiful like costuming and filming and we're just going to forget that this is a flawed story? Fuck but off. But it's not their job to educate people. Cool, but why do a story of people that gain their fucking wealth through the slave trade? Fuck off. <laughs> all, right, all right. All roads lead to fuck off. You want to play Goosebumps, bitch? It's fuck off. Like there's no... <laughs> KT Steins, there's no fucking answer, but fuck off. I don't need this. You just talked about stories about slavery, about black pain that's being channeled. You don't think that was a part of the device for the woman king? I feel like a lot of the frustration around the movie is around the educational aspect of what their artists and the director should have done. But to me, the onus of that should be on the people themselves. Either nah. before the movie no. or after. Like, you remember when you No, went... we're not going to spoil it, but there are intricate storylines, specifically in regards to Viola Davis's character, that were tied up into a little bow and it was really stupid. Don't come... F- like, no. No, we're not having this conversation. Go and listen to the Woman King episode. Demand better OT. <laughs> there are King Kongs out there, but maybe there were some King Kongs writing this film because fuck off. Okay, okay. I don't care about it that much to continue. You gave it an eight, it. though. I gave it an eight because I thought it was, as an action movie standalone, it was fine. I'm going to do a Tom Cruise audit. I'm going to audit your Thetans and I'm going to see. Because <laughs> there's no way you rated that an eight. And I'm pretty sure there's other shit that you rated the same, if not less than that, that deserved more than Woman King. It's an eight. No, but I'm saying there are other things that you probably should have rated higher than that. All right. All right. Well, if we're talking about fairness, if we're talking about squaring up with the industry and everything, that's right. Um, we're talking about sis. Oh. Yeah, the first season is still available on Vimeo, friends and lovers. Go and check out. Wow. Yeah, the first episode was something brilliant. You know, um, it's something that you could see there was a space for something needed. Uh, I I loved sis. I give it a nine. So, what did you rate sis? The way that the themes were executed, and again, the themes that don't get talked about in regards to Pacifica 
especially women as well as queer people in Aotearoa, as well as I guess if I could extend that to Australia as well. Not just the fact that these themes don't get covered, but they also don't get covered with their 10 toes down with their full chest energy. This show, 9.5. Oh, nice. Ooh. Yeah, it's definitely dissolved. I think watching it and seeing the intricacies and seeing that, you know, it was quite hilarious uh, from a black, person, a black person's perspective, watching it, uh, mm-hmm. those things that I could get. And hopefully there was something that uh, Pacifica people will be like, yeah, that's a nod to, you know, the community and it'll be even more funnier. But yeah. I think it cut across quite well. I loved, I just loved, loved the skits. It's, it's, I'm a sucker for sketch comedy, man. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we do love sketch comedy in the four year reference household. Um, but you know, this is the year, this is the decade, this is the century of Maori, Pacifica, Indigenous, Black and Brown joy. Mm-hmm. Representation, storytelling all around the world, friends and lovers. For sure. I guess going back to our whitewashing, we're now covering House of the Dragon. <laughs> oh. We have another patron rating, OT. Okay. This is from Paul. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure what to think as I am not the biggest fan of prequels, but it was amazing. It wavered a little with the big time jumps, but it absolutely paid off in the end. So much so that me and Zoe have started wa- watching Game of Thrones again. I say started. We're already on season four. With a laughing emoji. Wow, you really crunched through that. Yeah. What wow. do you think Paul rated it? I think he gave it a 10 then. A 9. Okay, good. Good on you, Paul. I gave this an 8. I gave it an 8.5. I feel like ugh, I need to see what I'm enjoying. So I just deducted marks off that alone just because I'm petty as fuck. What does that mean? You need to see what you're enjoying. What does that mean? It was fucking dark as hell most of the fucking episode. (laughs) So you have a problem with darkness? Are you done? Eh? (laughs) Put some candles on my guy. What the fuck? I'm not trying to seduce you. Doesn't matter. We we, we know Viserys could use all the seduction seduction he needed. Well, Scab Daddy made his way through, don't you worry? <laughs> um, I think as a starting point uh, uh, for season one, it was quite strong. Um, I know there's it ended quite strongly, but uh-huh. I couldn't I couldn't detach myself from how it started, you know, like from the first sort of few episodes where it was like, oh, building up, it was quite back and forth. I love that there's black characters in this, and I'm looking forward to more black characters in season two. And more outreach for season two. Character I development live. or just black characters? Black characters. Fuck the <laughs> character development. <laughs> I live off the outrage. So whoever's going to get angry because Collis has been resurrected as a 20-year-old man again. <laughs> fuck you. I don't care. I will go with that. Is it like Cartman? Mm, your delicious outrage. <laughs> 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 ah. What did you rate it? Oh, I'll give it an eight. I gave it an 8.5. Nice. Mm. All right. Well, let's move into the Riri coming out of her musician sort of hiatus. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Not only do we have another patron rating, we have a double patron rating OT. Ooh. Yeah. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. So this is Rob. The most I've felt in a Marvel film in a period where their excellence is waning. The performances are on point, the tears are constant, and overall we get a meaningful superhero movie focusing on the procession of grief and the meaning of legacy. All the feels. All the feels, man. Um, Did Rob give it a 10? Eight. I feel like I heard a rumor that they're rescinding South African passports, eh? (laughs) Whoa. Whoa. Hey. I'm not here. Uh, uh, okay. I'm okay. not here for your intercontinental wars, thank you. What, what, what was the other one? Uh, Colby. All right. Come through, Colby. Powerful in its purpose, passionate of its people, honoring to the life and legacy of Chadwick Boseman. Wakanda Forever makes the most out of a tragedy, while not as triumphant as I'd hope. It's a beautifully crafted story worthy of your praise. Okay. Did it give it a nine? Eight. 
Hey! The bloody eight wonkers. Are you hey. fighting our patrons? Okay. Uh, I give it a nine. What? I gave it a ten. Hey! I gave it a ten. Nice. I'll give it a nine. In as much as it wasn't as strong as the first movie, the homage was, was brilliant. It was very uh, emotional. It was good to see. Like, I didn't care for all the... What was the lady's name? Um, the, the, They put on the Iron Man suits and all that fucking shit. Oh, Riri, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't care for that nonsense. I felt like they had opportunity to just go different and be something, you know, unique. Mm-hmm. Rather than just, uh, I guess it's all Marvel. So, yeah, whatever. But I expected more from it. Okay. Uh, and, and that's the only reason why it's not a 10 for me. I think everything else was there. Uh, you know, my soundtrack, Wonka, uh, Rihanna's was just... What can I say? What can I say to do that justice? And the greatest of service was calling that character Riri. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Back the fuck off, man. Like, uh, yeah, nine. I'm glad I gave it a ten, though. The average is looking good. Do I have a bigger black tax than you or what? Seems like it. Well, when the quality is there, I'll absolutely put it. And I told you I cried at least three times in that film. Hmm. Um, and it's interesting because I do have qualms, quarrels and quandaries with this film, but I also don't take away from the emotional, um, and sort of cultural significance of this film. And I'm not even talking about black people worldwide. I'm just talking about culturally. It was very significant, even though apparently I'm on the other side fighting the Wakandans, but there you go. (laughs) (laughs) so let's move on uh the next film it will just be me rating this film because you haven't had a chance to watch it but also it will be a full episode when we get a chance and we get timing and ot will be able to watch it it's armageddon time Ooh! i give it a 10 of course i know you said it was one of the best movies you've watched after it came out of the cinema and i'm looking forward to that rating uh hopefully being reevaluated when you watch it a second time Hey, I don't take away your joy. Yeah, I, I take away Jeremy your joy. Jeremy Strong as well is going to be in it. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to enforcing your rating. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to a film that we've both watched. She said. <sighs> Where did all that passion go, Erty? You had so much passion earlier. I give it an eight. Oh, I gave it a seven. Okay. Uh... Like, it's a story that needed to be told, and it was told nicely. And, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this movie. What about you? Yeah, no, you you rated it higher than I did, so I didn't have anything else to say. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. How about The Lost King? Oi, I gave it a six. I gave it a six. We know why. Yeah, it's a weird concept for a movie. It's a weird It's not story. a weird concept. It's just if if it's there and you enjoy it, then you probably enjoyed Blockbuster. And it's I'm a sorry. weird concept until you learn it's a true story. Then you're like, ah, okay, this makes sense. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, let's continue. Let's move on. This is as a part of the Pacifica Film Festival, so you haven't a chance to watch Waikiki, but I rated Waikiki a 10. Mm come through so best believe when ot can watch it and when the rest of you friends and lovers can watch it we will be covering it on the podcast um but i absolutely love it it goes beyond that postcard sort of vision and imagery of hawaii and it really talks about the hard to talk about issues of native hawaiians um on their own land and struggling so it's very important to me and i really love the film nice nice i'm looking forward to watching it um and an update friends and lovers ot has had a chance now to watch neverland we literally just watched it uh what were your thoughts feelings because we haven't even covered your thoughts and feelings and then we'll do your rating uh it was it it was all it was a cool watch i think um the characters had this sort of interesting sort of backstory and all that it was cool watching the story and understanding the sort of the the backstory of how everything runs um but i felt like at the end of it it was it was all right i think the song 
you know, Katie came home and she was like, I I know there's the favorite, there's, you'd get a favorite song out of this show, out of this movie, which I did. Yeah. Because that song I is told a, you. That song is a fucking banger. It's, a, it's such a pro, <laughs> it's such a pro man song. Mm, 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 I'm there for it. I stand 100% behind it. Wow. <laughs> Old jokes aside. Um, You're all jokes, mate. Yeah, I, I couldn't. Um, I give it a seven. I gave it an eight. Okay. I think the eight is because of the cinematography and the directing of the film. Mm. Like it was done really, really well. Story wise, could have been more, but I, I really appreciated the directing and the cinematography. All right, fair enough. Oh, how are you feeling, OT? We're coming to the last film of the year. Good, good, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to have a ref max with a couple of the screenings that we're going to for the before the end of the year that we'll be talking about. But for the 2022 FYR Christmas special, this is the last absolute film. Whether you think it's Christmas or not, I guess talks to your man feelings. Oh. But let's talk about Die Hard. What do you rate it, my love? I gave it a nine. Why? <laughs> Oh, did you give it a higher rating? <laughs> I gave it a seven. Yeesh. You know, sometimes during the holiday period, you'll get a Grinch appearance. Wow. In there, and that's what Kate is exhibiting right now. Wow. Um, if you're against man feelings, uh, this is not a movie for you. If you're open to hearing men being vulnerable with each other, Stop through a walkie-talkie during the that. holiday period. You know, Die Hard is a movie for you. It's quite good. Bruce Willis, you know. Um, but wow, what, what can I say about this movie? It's one of the most watched movies, I think, for me at least. And I guess me trying to make it into a staple in the FYI household will take a bit more doing. And I'll continue banging that drum until Katie is fully... Into the into the diehard love fest, or you can just enjoy something and leave me out of it. No, what's the fun in that? <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. We made it to the end of the year. You be tired, motherfucker. You be tired. Who the fuck thought that was a good idea? <laughs> How are you feeling, my love? What would you say is your highlight of twenty twenty two? Oh. We've had such strong, strong black movies and TV shows come through this year. Uh huh. It's really been a highlight. I think for me, it's been uh, Pussy Valley. Yes. What it did to me for those um, Sundays we watched it. Uh, it's it's something that will stay with me. I think just the storytelling alone, the writing, um, Courtney A. Kemp is something. Just to to watch out for someone who you should watch out for because I feel like she she has another cap on her hat, mm -hmm. and we hopefully get to see more of what she can do. Oh, another Jordan Peele um, masterpiece this year. Yes, with Nope. Yes. Uh, fuck the naysayers. Fuck anyone who didn't get it or didn't want to look past the obvious. Oh, what this black character is having fun. Fuck you. <laughs> um it, it was much needed i think it's something that also would stay with me because i'd want to revisit that feeling i remember getting that feeling while watching the how they fall uh -huh. despite the fact that it was quite heavy mm -hmm. and you know would got all the nuances with rufus buck but it was good seeing how insular it was especially you know the how they fall but with what nope did this year yeah just elevated that and I'm happy and okay. I'm looking forward to a different sort of project that Jordan Peele will have because I feel like we're going on a journey with him. He's also a, sort of evolving in what he feels that he can write and what he can tell. Uh -huh. So it's very interesting and put an eye on him. You know, um, if you didn't understand Nope the first time you watched it, just watch it with a different lens and see that everything we've talked about, everything that you've read online about it and what he's trying to portray out in the movie I think you'd see it in a different view. You'd understand it. You'd love it. Mm -hmm. If not, fuck you. 
Uh, <laughs> that's the energy in this household. Respectfully or disrespectfully? Disrespectfully, you know. We, we're coming with the Tupac energy, man. Uh, <laughs> what else? I just loved it, man. I think we, you've told everyone to fuck off. I don't think there's anything else to say. You know, we, we got uh, another um, brilliant, brilliant season in Raising Canaan. Yes. Oof. A lot, a lot of black shows out there, um, black-led shows and movies that are doing their thing, you know, and I'm here for it. I love it. This year has been brilliant. And to more next year. I would like to give a shout out to Oti because I think this is the first time on the main podcast that you friends and lovers have gotten another insight to our beloved Oti. Mm. Yeah, it's, I'm not just the one getting told to fuck off now. Yeah, <laughs> At least it's all of you can fuck off. are going to fuck off. <laughs> There's no in between. Um, and in saying that, thank you so much, friends and lovers. Um, you know, last year we had a nice and tight, get it right, get it tight um, Christmas episode. Now we've gone back. We're at two and a half almost two and a half hours right now. But we wanted to say thank you so much. We love you. We sploosh you. We fuck off you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, w whether it's in our DMs or whether it's just revisiting stuff that you might have watched or you haven't watched and you want to spend some more time with your nasty KT and OT, you're most welcome to. But we love you and we appreciate all of you. Oh, for sure. And... um We'll we'll see. Uh, like we d we said, Black Snow is coming out next year. Black Snow is coming out. Yes, a very exciting interview that we have with Jemison. We love you. Um, yeah, a very exciting time, Oti. Exciting times indeed. And thank you all for hanging around and and being loyal listeners. We love and appreciate you. It's been a really good year for FYR, and um, hopefully onwards and upwards. Right. Yeah. Have a lovely time, friends and lovers, and we'll definitely have a bit more episodes before 2023, but we love you so much. Take this as permission to enjoy your fucking life, motherfuckers. Yeah. And we love you. And we love you. Mwah. <laughs>